Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Skippy and welcome to another video. So for a change, I'm not building one of the Grillo's World War II models. Uh, I'm going for this Super Cub 95. Um, I've had it a long time. It's been sat on my drawer and I thought, right, it's time to uh, get this built. Uh, Tim Mackay did a nice build of one, but he did a three channel with a 1S battery. I'm going to make this four channel and I'm going to use a 2S battery. So four channel, what we're going to need, we're going to need the brick with the receiver and the OC. I'm using a brushless 180 that came out, I think, of a S back, uh, which I had many years ago. Uh, the electrics the, themselves are, as you can tell, it was at an EDF. They're from the MiG-15, the E-Flight MiG-15, the no servos, and I'll be using the standard 2S batteries that I uh, have used for my Grillo's GL1 conversion. If you've not already seen that, have a look at that video. Uh, so electrics. UMX from a MiG-15 with a brushless 180 uh, motor and the prop is a 5 by 2.5. As I said, the electrics are from the MiG-15. Also, I've got the undercarriage, or the main wheels anyway, uh, and the plan is to use these wheels in nice soft rubber. I'm hoping it will give it a bit of bounce uh, when I'm flying off the tarmac. Um, because I'm going to be putting ailerons in and I'm not quite sure whether the actual standard wires are going to be long enough get to the um, board once it's in the model. I also have a couple of extension leads which I bought for a previous project which never got around to building so if necessary I'll be able to use those. So I won't spend too long in this section but the keen eyes of you notice the laser cut version. I do have the older version but I'm not going to use that one. The usual bits of bump, um, the plans. This model has got um, direction as it says here to do rubber power, gas engine or electric. Um, but it's not a four channel, it only does three channel, um, but I will make it four channel. A little bit of these, some bump on the other kits you can get. Made that one, made that one. Rubber band, won't be using that. Cowl, nice bit of plastic, I will be using this. Uh, the decals, I won't be using these decals. Um, I'll tell you why in a minute. And then, as you can see in here, the standard components, firewall, stringers. Nice laser cut parts, again, nice bit of wood there. Um, so all off to a good start. So I said I'm not going to use the decals that come with the kit. That's because it's a civilian model. Um, as you can tell from the models behind me, and if you've watched any other videos, um, I like to do the military uh, aircraft. I just find the, the, the camouflage more interesting. Um, what I want to try on this one, though, is I did a bit of Googling to see if I could find a military Super Cub. Uh, and there are some, but I wanted to try and find an RAF one, which I'd have. Uh, and it's all silver. So there's a picture there that I'll put up on the screen. Um, and one thing that I want to try is uh, is silver tissue paper. I don't know if you if you watched the video with the DR1, I used black tissue paper and then used dope on it. Uh, saved painting it, maybe saved a bit of weight, created my own decals. So what I want to try and do with the Super Cub is use silver tissue paper uh, so that I don't have to paint it and then I'll create my own decals. It is pretty basic, roundels. Uh, as you can see in the picture, again, click flash it up there. So nothing too fancy. Uh, and then the civilian registration underneath. Now, the only thing I'm not too sure about with the silver tissue paper is um, when people have used it in the past, they seem to have issues with it shrinking or not shrinking. Uh, this is the tissue paper I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's got quite a nice metallic look to it. Uh, it's very smooth. I think it's actually painted or coated. Um, I tried out something just a little earlier glued it over a square um, and this surface appears to be water resistant. Um, the dope didn't soak into it at all. It probably would if I did it on this side. You can see it's quite a difference in colour. So the challenge I'll have with this is I can't shrink the paper so when I put it onto the model I'm going to have to get it as tight as possible uh, and try and do it as neatly as possible. So that's going to be the challenge. You see behind me the, um, the SBD-3 dive bomber that's actually painted silver uh, and what I'm hoping is if I can get the application of this silver tissue right. Might be able to do another American World War II model in silver like the aluminium, because I think that's actually a really nice finish. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So again, this is a bit of a learning experience for me. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward plan. Build the wing in two halves, build the fuselage, the wing supports. There's no um, dihedral in the wing. Um, and actually that won't be such an issue for us because we're going to be giving it ailerons as well. 
the rudder and the elevator I will actually cut in and um, create the correct shapes so I'll have to do a little bit of reshaping or extra wood here uh, same on the rudder um, I won't be doing a single sheet which I've done in the past I will create it using the strip balsa because what I want to try and do is reduce the weight these airplanes can be um, typically tail heavy uh, although yes I'm going to be putting some chunky electrics in the front it's still quite an extra bit of weight at the back here um, so I'll try and keep that as light as possible. Um, undercarriage will be made with wire. I've said I'll use the foam wheels that I've already got. Um, so yeah, that's all looking good. What I will be doing though is photograph, sorry, photocopying a couple of these parts of the plan um, so that I can cut them out uh, and not worry about it too much. Uh, and also it's always good to have a second pe uh, backup plan. I will be building over this one and if it gets ruined, then at least I can still have uh, some spares there. Right then. This build I'm going to start with the tail pieces first um, because what I want to do is make sure that the silver tissue paper that I showed you earlier actually um, can be applied successfully because once it's on it can't be shrunk so that's a challenge it means I need to get it a bit neater. Uh, to make the rudder and um, stabilizers uh, you could just make it all in one piece of thin balsa and then cut it to shape um, that would be certainly the easiest way of doing it um, but I think that's going to add a little bit of weight. You could, if you were not giving elevator and rudder, just make it as per the plan here. Um, you could make it so that you have the two separate elevators and then just one piece here. Uh, and same on the rudder, just straight down. What I'm going to do is build the basic outline as per the plan. And I'm going to cut the frame so that I can have the correct shape rudder and the correct shape elevators. Uh, so I'm going to do those first uh, and then cover them with the silver tissue and see how they look. Okay, from the previous photos you've seen how I've created the four separate parts now for the rudder and the fin and the stabilizer and the elevators. What I'm going to do now is in these spaces here just put in some fillets just to add a bit of strength uh, and then I'll fill the gaps with the stringers uh, like that there. Uh, one tip um, on here as it says, if I can zoom it in a bit or focus, these spars aren't the standard quarter stringers they're actually slightly wider um, when I started I had the wrong size but I've got the right size now uh, easiest way to do is push it up against the height of the balsa and as long as it's the same height then you're good to go so we go so I'm going to make the fillets uh, and then I will complete these stringers inside uh, and then look to round off the edges Tail sections completed out of balsa. See, I've put the fillets in, put the stringers in. I've added these two bits of wood in here because that's where the wire will go, because this piece of wood in the center will be uh, cut out. So the wire will link the two together, but I leave that in until the wire's in so that it keeps them level. Um, fillets there on the tail, fillets as well. What I only need to do is round off the edges, uh, trailing and leading. Uh, and also one of the edges on the inner surface for where the movement's going to go. Um, I've also lightly sanded the surface on both sides to try and reduce a little bit of weight. These two bits I've added 
surprising weight actually, but it's quite dense wood. Um, but I want it that way so that the metal, um, stay, the wire stays in nice and neatly. So it's coming along, all done so far this morning. Um, so yeah, round off the edges and then look to put the metal into the elevator, separate it, then look at covering it. Tail components are made, elevators are joined with the metal wire, all nice and neat. Managed to bend it so that it was level and I need to cover it. Uh, the plan is to use silver tissue. Um, previously I've used normal tissue and spray painted it and actually that's not a bad silver finish. And I was hoping that this silver tissue um, might make it lighter um, but I'm not sure if it's going to be easy to apply. When I put it up against the painted tissue and the knot it's pretty much the same so actually it doesn't give me any nicer finish necessarily. It's perhaps more balanced as in the colours more even. Uh, and I've even got my big P47 down here that I painted silver a long time ago. It's not far off. So I'm going to try and cover these tail pieces, see how easy it is. Um, if this becomes a bit of a faff, then I'll give up on the silver tissue, use normal and just spray paint it like I've done previously on the SPD3. Okay, here we go. So this is first attempt at covering with this silver tissue paper. Uh, it's gone quite neatly actually to be honest the only thing is i will not be able to tighten it any more than that i've tried to pull it tight uh, as i've put it onto the bolsa frame but i can't get it too tight um, but it doesn't look too bad at all and compared to silver up here if we can do it it is actually a nicer finish i think it's just not going to have that tautness that you can get when the tissue is shrunk and then dries again um, so what i might do is just try on this piece to spray water on it and see if it does actually absorb into it. Um, but from a little test I did before I started doing the build, uh, it's pretty waterproof. So putting the decals on should be okay. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's gone on nicely. It looks nice, I think. Um, so I'll probably do, well, no, I will do the elevators and stabilizer uh, and see how that all looks. Tail sections are now complete. Elevator covered both sides. As you can see, it's not as tight as it would be if I could shrink it. Um, I'm hoping that when it comes to putting the decals on, for instance, on the rear stabiliser or the fin, that um, they do stick nicely. Um, but actually, I'm quite pleased with the finish. Even the edges isn't too bad. Probably need to go around with a little bit of extra yoo-hoo there just to make sure it's all sealed in. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I'm not sure how easy the wing will be, what it will look like with more the ribs, etc., and more curves on the fuselage. Um, but I think the tail sections have worked out quite well. Um, it wasn't as difficult to apply as I thought. Um, so I will now finish off putting these together and then that'll be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And uh, yeah, watch out for part two and we'll be building the wings next.